Hi, teachers. Welcome back to Well Upland Academy. I'm Antoinette, and this is the class that I promised on how to set up the Gmail on your Moodle. So there's a couple of things that you need to take note of. We're going to start at the very beginning. For Gmail, okay, let's, let's start at the real, real, real beginning. I'm going to go back to site administration. So when you, when your internet is funky, you have to wait. I've actually, this is the third time I'm taking this video. So let's hope, let's hope it goes right. So the first thing is that you obviously, you need a Gmail account. So in this case, I have a business Gmail account for Upload Academy itself. So I'm going to be using this email as well as its password, like its accompanying password. The next thing is, okay, you go into your, your Google, uh, into your Moodle, <laughs> brain is glitching. You go into your Moodle, into site administration. Then you want to be at server and you scroll right down to the bottom at email. You want to be at outgoing mail configuration. It's gonna take you to the screen over here. Now, from no reply and domain down, you don't really too bothered over there. So we're going to just be working with the section under SMTP. Anything there, it's, it's got an automatic like, um, thing there. You just replace it if you fill something in. So you don't need to say anything there. So in order to send um, emails with Gmail through a Gmail account, you need to be using the smtpgmail.com, well, SMTP dot gmail.com with the 465 port now technically speaking there's three different ports that you can be using the first one is the automatic port which is port 25 but unfortunately because i am using the google cloud platform it's got a security measure where it automatically rejects any information that's being sent out via the port 25 it's it's literally just a spam thing so my options are there for only 465 and 587 now, the thing is, is 587 is a, it's an unsecure port. So it doesn't have a, sort of like protocols on either side to make sure that your server and the server that you're sending it to are safe. So the best option is always to use 465. In as like any situation, you should be using 465. Even if you're using one of your own company emails, you should be using 465. The next thing is the SMTP security. No, you can use either SSL or TLS. If you're using none, you will be using the 587 port. But as I mentioned, you don't want to do that. You want to stick to the 465 port. It is the securest for yourself and for the people who are going to be receiving the emails. And it's it's just safer. Just stick to 465. Then this is the, the security protocol that I was speaking about. So the, the SSL, uh, SSL and TLS are essentially the same thing. All the security geeks out there, I'm sorry, because technically, yes, I get they're not the same thing, but in this context, they're the same thing. So whether you choose the one or the other doesn't really bother unless your server that you're using that hosts your emails is very specific about which one you should use. Um, personally, I use SSL more out of habit than anything else. It's not this. I don't have a specific reason why I'm using it. The next one is the SMTP authorization type. Now, if this is the same again. I don't actually know what is uh, plain and NTLM and the CRAM MD5. I've never used them. I always use login because I always use an email that needs to be logged into before it can be used. So stick to that. Stick to using the login. The next one is the username. So this is the actual um, Gmail account that you're going to be using to send the emails out of. And then the next one is the password. So for my Gmail account, I need to be using that password. Now, something that happens. So this is the only settings that you need to that you need to be aware of. So just like scroll down and then just make sure that you save them. I'm not going to save it now because it's already set up like this. The next thing I want to show you, and this is really, really cool, is Moodle has now got a built in email testing thing. So you can I'm just going to open this in a new tab. You can literally test your emails. Uh, to see if they're working from there. Now, something that I want to show you while we're at this is setting up the, the debugging. 
So first I'm going to be opening the admin site administration on a different tab. So what I want to do is I want to very quickly explain, first of all, especially if you are like me and you don't actually know all the fancy terminology and how things are said when you're trying to explain to an IT person that how things are working or to your admin person about what the problem is that you're experiencing. Now, one of the best ways to do that is to set it up so that you can actually speak the language or at the very least give them the language that the system is giving you because it's going to be easier for them to understand. In order to do that, you want to go to development. So inside administration, go to development right at the end and then you go to debugging. It's going to open it like this. You only want to be bothered with the first two ones. This one is usually um, ticked off. Just tick it on. And then here, just say developer level. So it's usually going to be on none. The debugging messages is usually going to be on none. But put it on developer and then you leave it like that, especially if you're trying to fix problems on your system. Do yourself a favor, though. As soon as you've sorted the problem or shared the information with your, um, your sort of admin tech support team, just switch the debugging off again because it can get kind of distracting and sometimes it uh, it's bugs that are sort of like part of the system and then it's throwing out these things and it scares people. Just switch it off when, when you're done again. So the first thing I want to do, so I've switched on my debugging. My debugging is always on because I'm this is my testing system. This is where if I'm doing something for a client, I do it on my own server first. And then I take the, the right answer over to theirs. So my debugging is always on. Then this over here is the testing email. So what I want to do is I'm first going to just send a test email on the settings that I've got over here. Now it should work, but Murphy's Law, things always happen. So I'm just going to go here. Now let's send it to, um, let's send it to Learn Academy. Email.com and we send that message. Now it should tell me that, yeah, the message got sent. There we go. This site has successfully sent a message. So if I want to double check, obviously I can go in here and I can see that I have sent myself a message via the Moodle Upland system and it's gone through. So it's working, which is fantastic. <clears throat> One of the things that you need to take note is Gmail is very, well, in general, <laughs> Google is very security. Um, what do you call it? Conscious. So once, even if you set up this, it's still going to give you an error. It's still going to tell you that you cannot send emails. So what you need to do is if you go to, I'm going to put this link in the, in the description below so that you can use this. This is in Moodle docs. So this is literally email set up Gmail. So if you go into Moodle, if you literally, if you just Google you want to set up your email for Gmail in Moodle. It's literally going to be the first one that pops up and you can just follow it like that. Now, one of the things that it tells you that it reminds you to do this guy over here. So basically it's you're familiar with the captcha. It's just making sure that you're not a, um, a, ro a bot that is busy doing things that it shouldn't in a system where it shouldn't be. So this is basically you just giving it saying, yes, please allow this traffic to come through my Google, my Gmail system. So the first thing when you set this up and you send it, it's first going to send you an email into the Gmail accounts, um, into the Gmail that you're trying to send it out of. And it looks like this. It says Google security alert. So if you click on it and then you go and you say check activity, then you can either, now if it wasn't you, you can obviously say, no, it wasn't me. Okay, so this one, I've already said, I've already sorted this problem, but what it usually does is it's got two little blocks at the bottom. The one says, no, it wasn't me, and the other one says, yes, it was me. And then you just click on the one that says, yes, it was me. It does provide you with options of allowing less secure traffic through your system. Now, unfortunately, yes, it does leave you open um, for exploita exploitation. But as I mentioned, they are super, super critical. They still, there's certain things that are still automatically going to be thrown out. So your system is still going to throw it out. It's still going to say, no, sorry. Even though you've allowed less secure apps to work through your system, what you do then is you go to this link over here and you click on it. And it's basically just a recognition capture where you say, yes, this is me. Yes, you can use this, allowing specifically Moodle to specifically send 
just emails through specifically your Gmail account. So all you do is continue. I'm not going to do it again because I've, I've obviously done it because my emails are working. And then your emails should work from there. Google's documentation, so the, the Google Docs for dealing with issues like this, is there is a lot of information and you will probably come across probably about 100, 200 videos of people who have given the solution on a video if you need that. The other thing is um, Moodle's documents themselves is also really detailed. The, it's the, between the Moodle documents and the community in Moodle, you will always find an answer. Because the thing is, is by the time you've run into a problem, somebody else has run into it and they've asked a question about it. And somebody is either busy solving it for them or it's already been solved. So make use of these things. I have another system that I use is the Bitnami documentation because I set up my Moodle through Bitnami. So there's another bunch. So there's all of this information available for you to read through or there are a bunch of videos because I'm lazy. I like videos. There's even a bunch of videos that you can look at to help you solve these problems. So just make sure that go and look for this information. Go, it's all, it's usually it's there, it's right there. So I'm, um, let's just see here quickly. I'm gonna, oh wow, fantastic. And give it a second. It's glitchy today, I'm not sure why. It has moments. Okay, so once you've set up your Gmail in your server, and you've said that you've allowed that activity, you need to go and click on this. So like I said, I'm gonna put this in the description below. What I want to do quickly is I want to show you what happens if the settings are not right and your debugging is on. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take away the SMTP part of the Gmail. I'm going to save this. Go back here and I'm going to resend this email. So we're gonna do this. Now, essentially, if I'm right, it should throw out an error message. Now, under normal circumstances, when your debugging is not on, it's not going to throw out the, the, the error message. But because I've specifically turned on the debugging, it's going to throw out a message. And this is what I mean by when you're speaking to someone, they're going to be able to help you reduce the amount of things that you need to look at that could potentially be the problem. Because what happened when I was busy testing my the this thing, I started thinking that there's an error with the PHP mailer. And I want to want to point out this thing. It's a dangerous thing to start thinking that there are PHP bug errors because I don't actually know what I'm doing when it comes to the PHP stuff. The all of the stuff that I've ever done is always copy and paste. Thank you, o Digital Ocean. And um the none of it is the real actual knowing how to do it. It's literally just following someone else's instructions. So when you start running into thinking that the problem is another problem other than something simple, you're going to be running into trouble because, and I can say this with absolute confidence, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is a user error and not a system error that is causing the problem that you're dealing with. And I, I can say this with confidence because this is literally what I ran into. I was convinced that the um, the server that I was using was rejecting my um, emails because they thought it was spam. I was convinced that it was not allowing my IP um, to send emails through the system. I was convinced it was not allowing my, my Moodle's IP to send through the system. So I was like thinking of all these other, you know, in my mind, you know, other reasons why it wasn't solving. And the reason it wasn't solving was because of conflicting information put in two different places. So the error was mine, not the systems. And when you start thinking that it's a bigger error than it is, you're making trouble for yourself. Okay, this is taking way too long. Okay, there we go. So we have an error message. So like I said, under normal circumstances, it's not going to show you this error message. But what makes this really nice is when you're dealing with your IT people, when you're dealing with your technical support, all you need to do is copy and paste this into an email and they're going to have an answer. They're going to have a sort of like a, um, they can reduce the amount of things that's potentially wrong. And from there, it's easier for them to, to solve the problem. So in this case, it's not going to specifically tell me that the problem is 
that I don't have um, SMTP in front, in front here. SMTP. It's not going to tell me specifically that that's the issue. But at the very least, it's going to tell me that like it didn't even send out. The information didn't even go anywhere. So it wasn't sending out information. There was no communication between this server and the email server, and uh, which means that probably the problem lies with how the things are set up. So just to prove that it's actually working, I'm just going to send the email again. And there it tells me that everything is working. All right. So if you have any questions, please don't be shy. Put a question in the comments below. Remember, I always add my email if you want to send me an email. And I'm more than willing to have you play around on my Moodle system if you're interested. Please join, come and have a look, come scratch around, see what is available. Um, and also, please don't be shy about suggesting anything that you want to have a video about, something that could help you do what you're doing. It can literally be anything. So I will have the other email set up video up as soon as possible. I also um, am almost, almost done with the, the badge setup video. And then also what um, something that has been requested, which is really cool, is how to create a lesson. And I really want, I'm taking that one really slowly. So you're only going to get it sort of towards the end of next week because I want to um, make it a little bit more elaborate than just the simple answer, straightforward answer, to show you rather the potential of what a lesson can do for you instead of just how you can set up a lesson where a learner can work through the information themselves. So all that and more. And as usual, I've made this video insanely long. Same as always, please stay safe and we will speak soon.